Gil here at Sailing Vessel Dream Chaser, and I'm in San Diego for business this week, so I thought I'd walk along the waterfront, take a nice little track along down to the Embarcado, I think is what it's called, the landing place. Talk to you soon. San Diego today. Decided to go ahead and take a walk uh, before my conference today along the waterfront, and what you see behind me is the USS Midland. The irony behind this is this is small according to today's standards. Just sense of the size and scope. I'm standing behind the fantail here. What they call the fantail cafe. Just to give you an idea. I'm gonna pivot out to the sides. Pretty amazing sun. The elevator on the side where they actually take the planes from the storage hold down below and raise them up to the upper deck to take off. I'll be pretty hairy. In when I got to San Diego, it dawned on me that I think Sailing Out Zero and Christian were down here. I reached out to him via Facebook and thought, oh, it'd be cool to be able to go visit him, have a beer with him, say hi. We both sail on Bill Garden Design boats. I thought it'd be kind of fun. Unfortunately, he's not here, but I think I saw the boat. I'm going to walk over and take a look. So for those of you that follow sailing blogs, you'll probably recognize this boat. This is the Sailing Out Zero. Uh, Christian and Rebecca sail this. I think they bought it in Mexico, sailed to Hawaii. Christian did a solo sail all the way up to Alaska in it. They then sailed from Alaska all the way down the Pacific coast. And uh, don't know where their adventures take them next, but it's amazing. You look at a boat like this and, you know, the stories they could tell, right? You don't know all those stories that are there. And this particular one has been all over the Pacific Ocean. It's pretty darn amazing to me. Beautiful boat. And he redid all the decks on this, so... He's been very helpful in uh, sharing with me uh, kind of how he's done some of that work, given that we're going to be doing the same. It's a Hudson Force 50. Very similar to the Formosa 51s. Beautiful boat. I noticed that the bowsprit tends to be a little more parallel on those than, uh, than on the Formosa. Consider as we're looking at rebuilding deck boxes, I like how he has it wider in the back and narrower in the front to align with the shape of the hull, so we'll have to consider something similar. There's a few things I really like about this. One, I do like the solid handrail, so instead of lifelines, he has solid tubing handrails. That is pretty handy. Great example of an old maritime tall ship. Well, we sail these days with a cutter rig cache, and people get on board and they, they're curious about all the ropes and how confusing it is. Can you only imagine the pulling lines on this thing? But again, the detail is amazing. So, I'll try and zoom in here on the figure. This is the HMS Surprise and the figurehead that's on the front of this old uh, frigate replica. Bunks hung over the cannons, and oftentimes this is where happy time would occur, and the term son of a gun was formed from children who were conceived in the beds above the cannon. It's quite a fantail right there. The bright work on this is phenomenal. I got the Star of India right behind us. I might see if I have time to go take a little, little tour of her. Uh, so an old merchant ship, tall ship, uh, I believe was used most recently still for cargo. Now that is a dolphin striker. It loses a little bit in the video, but the bottom of that um, bowsprit is probably, I don't know, maybe 18 inches in diameter, something like that. And then up it goes all the way to the tip. Pretty amazing. Pretty amazing ship, the Star of India. The attention to detail here is pretty amazing. So if you can see these uh, supports that go out and hold the bowsprit parallel, the lion on the end of it. And great the detail. Star of India, huge tall ship. This is not your average small tall ship that you tend to see at places. Well, I will say that capsule's smaller than the one that was just went on the uh, HMS Surprise. Pretty happy with my Jabsco bilge pumps, but look at the size of that thing. 
Wow. That's a uh, two-hand pumper. You can kind of see the pistons right here. Go down inside, and as this was rotated up and down, those pistons would go up and down and actually pump water from the bill. A great view of a galley here. You can see the size of this wood stove. It's just truly amazing at its sheer size. But I guess when you're talking about cooking for a crew this large, it makes sense. Pantry counters for preparation, and then all your uh, cast iron right here to serve with. When you see something being refinished, it truly is amazing. So this one rail is refinished. It's going to end up being the uh, belaying pin rails around the forward mast. But those are done and they look gorgeous. So here we are in the forecastle, for castle, the way it's spelled, but forecastle. And you can see here the anchor winches, uh, which are just truly amazing. It looks like it probably goes up top to a capstan that ends up turning all of this. But the shelves for storing of lines and whatnot is pretty amazing. And if you look all the way forward, you can kind of see the edge of the bowsprit that goes up forward for supporting of the masts. So here's the capstan that sits up top uh, and is connected to all those gears for the anchor winch. And you get six or eight guys walking circles around this capstan to turn those gears. It truly is amazing. I wonder how many of these companies are still in business. The American Ship Windless Company in Providence, Rhode Island. Pretty good vantage point of the ship here. I am up on the bow, kind of looking backward. Just going to kind of aim upward a little bit to get a sense of the sails. They're not as terribly tall as you might think, but boy, there's going to be a lot of sail area on a tall ship like this. We'll make our way toward the uh, stern here, the fan tail. You can see here they've been replacing the tow rail down one side of it. It's good to see they use the same tools, little Ryobi with some, uh, some sanding discs, but you can kind of see how they do it here. You get several of these boards glued together and just sanding them smooth into one solid piece. This just goes to show no boat can live without West Systems resin, hardener, and some kind of a filler. Oh, and a host of mixing cups. That's kind of funny to me. In the middle of this kind of work myself. Kind of up here on the fantail. Just gorgeous. Gorgeous. Now that is a butterfly hatch. This is inside the rear coach house of the Star of India. That's beautiful. Here's a mate's uh, cabin. It's pretty nice accommodations. Could certainly work. Staircase up to the helm. It's beautiful. Surgeon's quarters, the pantry, captain's cabin, not too bad, a little seating area and wardrobe. And he happens to be right across from the chart room. Otherwise he needs to come in and do any kind of navigation. Certainly has everything there with charts up top. And his instrumentation. down in the upper deck of the Star of India. There's another lower cargo hold below. Well, it is some fancy knot work right there. This is down in the lower storage hold at the bow of the boat. You kind of see the frames of the ship. Pretty amazing. So down here's the lower hole. Let me give you a sense of it. So you kind of look up, you start to get a sense of the upper deck and mass up there. It's actually two decks down. We have quite a workshop in here with tons of lines and uh, blocks. I actually saw a guy up front, they have a working section here in the Maritime Museum, and he's refinishing blocks up front and repainting them. So I'm assuming that's what part of this is. It's 
probably constant effort and work. Probably never ends, quite frankly. Sort of the behind the scenes area, but there's a curtain here with a whole rear side of the ship. Looks like a giant workroom. This is how one would actually stand. Uh, as you can see, I've got the mast right here next to me. Like standing out on the boom. The way it looks. Understand? Yeah, basically just standing on lines. It's pretty tough. I'm, I'm wobbling around quite a bit. I can't imagine doing this 30 feet in the air. Be a little hairy for sure. I hope you enjoyed the tour of India and the Maritime Museum. I uh, do apologize folks, I've been traveling quite a bit for work and because of that I've not been able to get a video out every single week of actual boat work. But I was having fun with this trip and the one I take uh, this week in San Francisco. So talk to you soon and we'll be back to uh, boat work very quickly. Hey everybody, thanks for watching and please follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram or even Tumblr. Please take a moment and go over to our website at s vdreamchaser.com to download free resources for cruising and how-to projects. Get your thumbs and mouses ready. We also have a couple of links right on the screen for some other playlists and videos that we think you'll enjoy. Thanks for watching fellow dreamers.